You're listening to the Poster Boy Podcast. Our mission is to help young entrepreneurs in small town America start, grow, and manage 21st century businesses. Are you ready? Let's get started. All right, this is Chad. Hey, and this is Drew. Today, we're going to talk about another quote. A quote by Thomas Edison, and it says, there's no substitute for hard work. You know, thinking back to last week's podcast, I think this is a good transition topic to talk about hard work. Do you have any stories or big opinions about putting in hard work? I know you've put in lots of hard work through your organization. Yeah, you know... um, I think I think the first part we really want to address for there's no substitute for hard work is the fact that the real secret to this particular quote is you really just want to work on something you love. You know, if you, if you really compare it to you and I, Drew, as we do these podcasts, it, it's funny because some people would call this work, yet you and I, we just enjoy it. And, you know, we drive everyone crazy for how much time we are willing to spend on these things. Oh, yes. My my grandpa would always used to say. When I was a really little kid, he said, if you found something you love doing, you never work a day in your life. And I, I know you're going to talk about that a little bit, but I, I wanted to to share that because this concept of hard work, it isn't, it, I think maybe the younger audiences, maybe they, they come from a background where they're told that life is just easy. You look at YouTube stars that have, you know, uh, a million viewers and Uh, They make millions and millions of dollars because they get to review toys or they play video games and we might disparage them. But could you imagine all the hard work they have to put in? You know, there's I've heard there's quite a bit of of YouTuber burnout, too. But uh, maybe that maybe that's a little bit of a sidetrack. But I'll I'll let you share. Um, You know, maybe maybe if someone sat down with their yellow legal pad and wrote down things they love, maybe YouTube is on that list. Well, absolutely. And, you know, I think it's also really important to understand that, you know, in life, we have to do something. Okay. And there's so many people that sacrifice doing things they love for for money. Right. And so I think that for me personally, I just was always driven by freedom and flexibility. Right. And so I'm willing to commit a lot of my life to make sure that I have freedom and flexibility just because I I just never really worked out when I had normal jobs and people would, you know, I just always hated the control. Uh, and I, I, even though it's funny because when you work for yourself and you, and you build a company, you tend to work to double the hours that, that anyone else works, but yet you feel like you never work. And the reason is, is because anytime, like if I decided right now I wanted to get up and go eat, I can do that. Whereas, you know, if you have a normal job, there are a lot of things that you can't do. You know, everything's very structured and very scheduled. I have an, a great example, and I hope this inspires someone today, maybe in, maybe in a good way. I worked at a company for about 10 months. It was the kind of company that you had to put in hard work to succeed. It was very much so. They had a hustle culture. And the last three months, I started to recognize that all of my hard work was probably going towards something that I wouldn't be at a year from now. Why would I try so hard for a company that won't benefit me in a year. And I literally had a moment and I even told my manager who I was really cool with. I said, why would I take the time to rebuild this organization when I can just build my own organization and realize the fruits of my labor and enjoy doing it? And he just nodded his head. He said, like, he said, you have to do that. You can't waste your energy, waste your time. Because I think there's something very, there's very sacred or very very uh, intimate about your energy and the effort you put in. So if you're going to, if you're going to work hard, you might, might as well be something you enjoy doing. Well, absolutely. And first of all, I love, <laughs> I love that mentality. <laughs> that's, like, that's just a classic entrepreneur mentality. <clears throat> you know, um, whenever, whenever we were, when I was pondering this quote and, you know, listing some bullet points and things I wanted to talk about and stuff, one of the things that I do want to note about hard work and understanding the value of work is as you're, you know, as you're trying to achieve like freedom and flexibility, you have to really always look at at the value of time. And I think so many people fail to do that because, you know, time is the one commodity, no matter how much money you have, you cannot purchase. Right. And so the reason that you work so hard and you're so diligent is because the harder you work, the more time you can accumulate in dollar form. So let's just say hypothetically, you know, just to make it easy, you make $10 an hour. And if you have $100 in the bank, essentially you have 10 hours of life in the bank. Okay. And so if you're spending money, whenever you go and you buy something that's $50, 
you're spending five hours of your life. Okay. And whenever you can start wrapping your mind around that and start looking at your life and, you know, the, the financial things that you gain in units of time, every, everything really changes. But so <clears throat> I want to explain to you why this quote to me is just so powerful. And I'm actually going to use an example of working out. Okay. So a lot of people, you know, I go to the gym every morning and, and so many people uh, claim they go to the gym, right? So they show up, they do, and they're there every morning. And you see them, you know, let's say they're doing a leg press and they're doing, I don't know, I don't know, 50 pounds or 70 pounds. And the truth is they could probably do 200 pounds. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they could do it if they push themselves. But people generally don't do that. They don't push themselves to the limit and continue to push the limit. And the people that I think that succeed you know, and Thomas Edison would obviously, uh, you know, just based on his light bulb experience and, you know, he, he didn't find what do you say? He didn't find 10,000 ways that wouldn't work or the 10,000 <laughs> ways that worked. He found 9,999 that didn't. Yeah. Right. Um, you, know, you know, I mean, everyone's heard the yeah. quote, but the, the thing is, what, what you want to do if you're going to the gym is you want to push it as hard as you can, even if it's only for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or whatever it is, because what's really hard you're pushing yourself to do today in four months, that should seem like an easy workout, right? And we want the same thing when we're building a business. If, if we're going to sit there and work for, let's say, eight hours a day, we don't want to spend three of those hours surfing YouTube or getting lost on social media, you know, which I really don't do any of. Mm -hmm. But we want to work as hard as we can and as efficient as we can. So when we finish our day, we feel good about the time we have left and we feel good about spending it with our loved ones. But a lot of times what happens are people, they want to pretend they work hard, but they feel guilty because they didn't accomplish too much, right? And it's like having a job. If you're at a job and you work at a company and you realize that you're not giving it your all, <clears throat> you know, if you do get fired, whose fault is it, yeah. right? It's almost, it can build you a competitive edge if you, if you realize that maybe not a lot of people put in that much effort. And if you put in twice as much effort as someone else, you're going to get twice the results. As long as you're doing it smart and you're doing it carefully and strategically. But there, there is no, I mean, you could be strategic all day long. I know, you know, within my capacity, uh, you know, my output is based on how, how sophisticated, how strategic our strategies can be. But sometimes you just got to put your head down, put in that hard work and, and, and make it. And if everyone else isn't work, willing to work as hard as you, then it, your it's your clients, your customers, your your future business partners will soon recognize that there's really no replacement for hard work. Well, I could not agree more. And one thing that you just mentioned was you said that uh, you know you put in a lot of hours and you work twice as hard and things like that, right? And what I found in the very beginning, and I think all entrepreneurs will find this in the very beginning, you're going to put in more than forty hours a week. Now, whether or not they're productive, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, but you want to, you know, start evaluating the things that you're working on. But for me, in the very, very beginning, I really evaluated it this way. I was really young. I didn't have a lot going on. And I this really, you know, as I mentioned last week, my business started, it set my soul on fire. So I, I loved doing it. I loved seeing progress. I loved all of those things. And, and what I found was that if I was willing to work 80 hours a week in the beginning, then if I had a competition and they were working 40 hours a week at the end of the year, I would be one full year ahead of mm -hmm. them. And that was the way that I approached it in the very beginning. You know, I was willing to commit a, more time than most people just because I had the luxury of it in the beginning. There were not, there weren't other things that I wanted to spend my time doing. And so in that particular part of my life, I found the most value in my life it was investing in myself and investing time in my business. And, you know, today, the fruits of those labors, they've definitely paid off. You know, probably, well, not probably, way more than I ever anticipated they would. But really, it, it wasn't anything special. People are always like, how'd you do it? And it's like, you know, actually, I solved one problem at a time. <laughs> that's, that's really yeah. the, the extent of, of how it all happened. I just worked really hard on a problem. I never settled for duct taping a problem. You know, so many people, if you go in their life or you go in their cars, right? They're dirty. You go into their house. They don't, they don't keep them clean, things like that. It's, it's because they don't put in the attention to detail. Right. All of these things matter. You know, I don't know if you've ever heard the, the quote, Drew, and I'm sure this will be a podcast one day, but you are the sum of the five people you spend the most time with. No, I've never heard that one, but right? I can't wait to talk about that one. 
Well, if you think about that one, it's almost like a mixing in a, you know, a secondary yeah. cast here. But if you really think about that, you know, if, if, if I were to, to look to hire someone, I could spend time with only their friends and determine if I wanted to hire them. If the friends smoke, odds are they smoke. If the friends drink, odds are they drink. If the friends are sloppy and messy, odds are they are. If, you know, it really, it's just, it all, it all runs in tandem. I don't know how else to explain it. Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll maybe double down on the working twice as hard because, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, as you, as you, you're working out, right? Like you're working out towards a purpose. You're, you're slimming down, you're getting, uh, you're bulking up, right? Like you're working towards an objective and the harder you work, you're going to get there faster. But not only that, you're going to learn the lessons. You're going to find the mistakes. You're going to evolve as a person much quicker if you put in that harder work. So I imagine, you know, back to your, back to your example, if you worked 80 hours a week, you, you failed faster, you hit those mistakes sooner. So not only were you a, a twice as old organization compared to someone else who was working, you know, a, a, a meager re- regular 30 to 40 hours a week. But you also you were able to to grow as a person even that much faster. And I think that's a to me, that seems like a natural byproduct of of hard work because you're going to learn you're going to learn about yourself. Imagine imagine a, a, a bricklayer or a mason, right? Like their their experience is, is in their quality, but it's also in their efficiency. And the the mastery of an experienced mason is probably much better than the mastery of just a junior mason. But they got there because they put in the hard work. Well, and to to piggyback off of what you said, I think there's an important part uh, is that you you have to work really hard in a specific mm. direction. OK, and so, you know, a little spoiler alert for those that haven't read the book. Um, inside the book, I talk about an activity that that we talk about often. Uh, anytime we speak anywhere, anytime I, you know, am training new people. I always say, look, if we put you in the middle of a room and there were four corners and I said, I want you to go to a corner of the room, right? So you start walking and, and you're on your way. And then all of a sudden, I put a bunch of chairs in front of you heading to that corner. Well, then all of a sudden you stop, you change course and you start heading in a different direction. Okay. And then there the floor splits open and you're like, oh man. And then, so you decide to go to a different corner, right? So, but, but then if, if we were to start this exact experience over, and I were to say, hey, in corner A over there, there's a briefcase with a million dollars in it. If you get there, it's yours, right? So you start working, these chairs get put in the way. Well, all of a sudden you climb over them, right? There's a hole in the floor. All of a sudden you figure out a way to jump over it, okay? Because you're working towards a destination. It, it doesn't mean the destination is going to be easy. It just means as long as you have a, dis- a destination and you're putting in hard work, you will chip away you know, through the, uh, along the path. And eventually you will get there. It is, it is almost a certainty. If you get smarter and stop making mistakes, assuming you are not in a dying industry. Okay. You know, a professor of mine in college told me something that sticks with me and it makes me laugh all the time. He said, you know, Chad, people sell air, dirt, and water for a living, all of which are on earth abundant and free, (laughs) but they found a way to monetize it. Okay. Because you can sell anything if you can help people understand the value of it and build a system around it to make it profitable. And so I, whenever people say, can this work? Of course it can work. People sell dirt. Okay. (laughs) Literally they do. That's amazing. You know, I I thought about asking this question and I, I don't know if it's even the right question to ask, but do you think that there's any connection between hard work, not passion, but maybe it's desire, right? Like, for a like inwardly right like people i know that you you're doing your business and you wrote down on your list things that that are like very physical right like you wrote down you know being important and being around people and you know growing growing as a human i'm curious if if you think there's any connection between you know putting in hard work and maturing as a person and does it putting in that hard work does it contribute to them as a as a human being it's more correlated to if they have direction in their life and if they have goals. Okay. Because look, like my, my passion and my purpose is obviously the business that I work on. Right. But for someone, let's just say they do have a job or let's say they are building a business and it's solely for monetary gain only because they have this objective that, you know, they want to spend, you know, we have to be careful here, but let's just say hypothetically, their goal is to purchase a sailboat and sail around the world. Right. It's going to take one year and there's this thing they want to do. So, they might work exceptionally hard at something they're not passionate about, 
because they're working to fund something they are passionate about. Yeah, I, I, I see, I see what, what you're saying. And I've I've heard, you know, I've heard the flip side of my my grandpa's quote before you work to live, go to the job that you hate and you put your head down and you work the 10 hours a day. Maybe it's maybe there's a little bit of passion. Maybe you just like a challenge, but you do that. And then you come home and you live your life uh, three and a half hours before it's bedtime every single day. And I don't know, like I, yeah. I, I've heard that. And that, so like modern <laughs> that doesn't prison. sound very <laughs> exciting to me. And, you know, th- like, let's not let, let's not make any mistakes. You know, owning a business is incredibly difficult, but I feel like the freedom you get from that. If you find the right thing you're in and you work towards it, you're going to love it. And you're gonna, not only are you going to love what you're doing every day, but I think you'll love the output of building that business, the freedom, the people you meet, the decisions you, you're able to make. And, and what, at, at the inevitable point of success, how giving and how caring and how, how, um, how you can share this experience with other people. Well, one thing that uh, that I really want to point out, and I have found this. So this is the thing that you have to understand. OK, people, the majority of the population is not going to work with the same passion that an entrepreneur will. OK, and it was probably it's probably one of the most discouraging things ever whenever you start hiring people, because they will never work with the same level of desire that you do. You know, when you're first starting out, you are you are the desire and people will feel it. They'll see it. They'll understand it. But when you hire people, it's not it. Right. And so. You have to understand, and, and it's, it's a trait that you need to develop as you're growing, is what is each individual person's carrot? What is it that motivates them? Because that's how you achieve hard work, right? And so what you want to do is paint a vision, and, and that's part of being an entrepreneur is being the visionary and having that vision. But you also need to help someone understand how your vision aligns with their vision. And if they work hard on your vision, how they can achieve their vision. Yeah, that, that, Does that make I love sense? that. And it makes a lot of sense. And I imagine that there's a quote out there because something that something that comes to mind, maybe, maybe you're the quote master. Maybe you have this uh, off the top of your head. But um, at some point, as a business grows, you need to be and continue to be the visionary. Chad, I know you're you're a very active uh, very visionary type person. I'm you, you get the best and ins- inspire people and motivate people daily. And I can, I am, as I'm growing my business, I'm now more cautious than ever about hiring that first person <laughs> because I want to hire someone who's entrepreneurial. Uh, but you know, we have to recognize and correct me if I'm wrong here, but you have to recognize that at some point you're, you're onboarding people for their value, for their hard work. And you need to make sure that people uh, are aligned to the vision. But, you know, like that's how you move yourself out of the day to day business. Chad, I know you've been at your business for well over 10 years from now. At what point did you realize that you could pull yourself out of it and just be the visionary? <laughs> well, well, I, wa- I want to say something that you just you just knocked. You just talked about, right? You want to hire another entrepreneur that has that mindset, right? Actually, I'm I'm going to say that I disagree. Okay. I, I, I thought yeah. the same way you did in the beginning, but something that I've learned, and this is, this is kind of a funny statement that some entrepreneurs have, and you know, maybe it's quoted by someone, I'm not really sure, but um, it's something that one of my professors again told me. And he said that, listen, Chad, the A students work for the B students. The B students work for the C students and D students get schools named after. Well, I'm, I'm okay, so now wait, me. before before we laugh at this or we discourage people, I'm going to explain. OK, so I want you to think about what it takes to get straight A's. OK, it takes doing exactly what you're told and never deviating from the plan. Mm-hmm. It takes being timely. It takes being all of those things. Right. So if you're hiring for a tactical position, you want an A student. Okay, a C student is someone who does enough to get by, you know, they 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 commit enough time to it, whatever, right? D students, they tend to have their own agenda and they tend to like they like someone like me, right? I might get D's in every class except for entrepreneurship because it's the only thing I cared about, so therefore I applied myself. But I would only apply myself to things that I was passionate about. Whereas an A student, they applied themselves to everything they were told they had to do. Okay, and instead of arguing or fighting back, that's just what they did, right? So that's how they achieved the 4.0 or the 5.0. 
Because look, the truth is 90, 90 to 95 percent of jobs you don't need a special skill. You can learn anything. If the system's built right, and if it's not built right, it's not a business that you really want to be a part of because it's hard to grow anyway. Okay, because you need a system where you can put a lot of people in if you're going to scale anything. So you you want to dumb it down and have the least like high-end job skill sets necessary. You, you want to have as minimal of those as possible because the job market or the, the market of people, it's not as big. You know, and so you're it's it's cutthroat and you're fighting for everyone. And so what I found is that if I can, uh, you know, like when we were just to give you an example and, you know, and for those out there that know we do we do sports posters at sporting events. And so for the longest time, the only way we could work at an event was if we brought a graphic designer with us. Right. So now we're paying one designer to work at an event plus a salesperson. Right. And and tend to be graphic Mm -hmm. designers aren't generally people persons. So we really struggled to grow. And then we found that if we put all of our designers in one room, we could have less designers and let them work on multiple events at one time because not everyone's busy all day, right? And so therefore now to grow, we needed less skills. We no longer needed a graphic designer that could travel. Now we just need yeah, a salesperson. I, I, see, I see exactly what you're saying. You see and what I'm saying? That <laughs> there's kind of an aha moment there. <laughs> well, yeah. I, 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 I want to tie it back into our quote, by the way. So, you know, being that there's no substitute for hard work, you, you want people to work hard on something they are good at or they excel at, right? And so when you put a designer in a tournament style setting and there are thousands of people there and they don't enjoy casual conversation and they're not really good at being like, oh, yeah, hey, you know, let's say it's a prime example. If I'm in an event, something that always, you know, makes me well, if I see someone wearing a, an NFL jersey, right, I will always comment on it if I... I don't know if you see someone with their nails done, you compliment them because, you know, you just notice these things. Right. But someone who's not a people person, they don't. But if you put them in a room with 10 other graphic designers, all of a sudden the conversation similar, the comfort zone is similar. So therefore, they're working harder because you've created an, an environment that promotes hard work. And, and it's something that they don't when you start looking at other jobs, you go, man, how am I going to find another job doing this? Right. And something that you'll find over time is that the truth is very, very rare is money the ultimate motivator. Okay, so many people when they start, so many entrepreneurs think that the only way to hire someone is to be able to pay like big salaries or this and that. And I have found personally that money is not the ultimate motivator, not even kind of. The number one motivator is being important feeling as if you matter. Like if you were not here tomorrow, if people would notice, that is the number one factor in people anywhere. You want, like if you work somewhere and you become friends with someone, guess what you don't want to do? You don't want to quit because yeah. you feel bad, right? If it's just about money and I'm making 50 grand a year, but I can apply to I'll, another job I'll tell and you, 60 Chad, grand a year, uh, I'll quit in two seconds. 10 years in corporate environments, you hit it right on the head. That is that, you know, I've I've been offered those those big six figure salaries and I have put in the hustle. And the one thing that you really feel good about is when you're in a room of people that respect you and that you respect and that you're putting in that good labor and that good hard work. And the moment that you that you feel you're as an organization that you're being disparaged or they don't need you anymore you start to look elsewhere. And I'm, I'm glad that you've built from the top down that level of, of organization. Absolutely. Well, you know, what's funny is when you have an organization like that, hard work tends to just show up, right? Because if everyone around you, again, remember, we become the people that we're surrounded by, right? We become the, the sum of the five people. And when you start a job, you tend to start surrounding yourself by the people that you work with. And so if you create a, a great culture and you lead by example, and you work as hard as anyone you've ever seen or harder, then when people are around you, they tend to follow suit, right? And so that's just that's just part of the culture. And so, you know, one of the things, Drew, that we always talk about is we want people to be able to have an action plan and something they can take yes. away from any episode that we have, right? And so um, you kind of mentioned a few of the pieces that we are going to ask for people and, and as a part of their action plan. But the first thing to do is to figure out what is it that you love, what is it that you really love, right? And it could be anything. It could be something as simple as, you know, shorts, t-shirts, and flip-flops. It can be being important, typing computers, right? Reading, educating yourself, photography, all these other things. 
but you want to create a list and then, you know, you want to break the list down and take it. Let's say it is photography, right? And then list all of the things you can think about with photography. Maybe it's event photos. Maybe it's, you know, corporate photography or beach photos. You know, I'm not really sure, but you do this for all of them. And then you start looking at each list and you, and you like, let's say you have five items, right? Let's just say hypothetically, we have photography and we have shorts, t-shirts and flip-flops and being outdoors and computers. And then we have being important, right? Well, if you've taken our course online, one of the things that you'll see is that we take a lot of these, we break some jobs down and then we come together with the fact that we could do photography on the beach wearing flip-flops of families, you know, in vacations where, and then we have an office in the resort itself, right? It, because that's how creative we can get and how, and how we can take it down. And all of a sudden we've been able to combine a lot of the things we love. Okay. You know, and I think Drew, you and I being in the restaurant world, I, I had, I had a friend of mine when I first gave this thing and they're like, well, I love eating. How do you put that on there? And I was like, funny you asked that, right? Because Drew and I are very familiar with people called secret shoppers, right? So what happens is as a <laughs> as a waiter, you're told that someone may show up in your restaurant and grade the quality of your service, but you're never going to know who that person is. So a mystery shopper is someone who goes from restaurant to restaurant and is paid to eat and review the quality of the service, the quality of the server. And just so everyone knows, I almost got a 100 on my scorecard. Just just so everyone knows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's because Drew is an A student. <laughs> um, no, absolutely. Well, and, and that's just, again, it goes back to getting started, you know, and so to work on something you love, the first thing you have to do is figure out what you love working on and really be creative. Don't, you know, it, remember, this is the cool part about a business or any type of deal or any type of partnership. You know what? It will work if you can get two parties to agree to it. And if you have an idea and you can convince someone to pay you for it because it's valuable, it can be a business. And you could easily, you know, Drew, there's something that we just take two examples. Let's take the, the the secret shopper idea. I mean, all we have to do is get a bunch of our friends together that love eating, you know, I, I don't know what food, you know, whatever, sports bars and grills. And then we can create this and be guest shoppers for sports bars and grills all over the Chicagoland area, all over the Dallas area, wherever we wanted to, and provide reports and get paid to eat every week. Something else, you know, that I put on one of mine when I was doing it was the fact that I love shorts, T-shirts and flip flops. I also love talking with people and things like that. So another, uh, you know, another creative idea we could do is we could create our own call center. Right. But we do it for a small niche of people which are starting small businesses that don't have the money for a secretary. And we negotiate a fee. And let's just say hypothetically, it's 50 bucks a week per company. And all we do is we sit down with the person that owns it and we ask them for the top 20 questions they receive when they're getting phone calls and we get the appropriate answer to the call. And then we can create a call center from our house and sign up 20 companies and make a thousand bucks a week. And they, and they're only paying 50 bucks a week, right? So we're taking a $4,000 a month job and breaking it down to $200 or, you know, to yeah, $50 that, a week per that, company. That's a really good you see what I'm uh, saying? idea that, yeah. And I think, I think it can, no, we're, no, we're not doing it. <laughs> But, but, you know, conceptualizing (laughs) how easy that is. If someone wrote down on their list, well, I just want to stay in my home all day and I want to have Netflix on in the background. I'm sure you can answer the phone while you're watching Netflix and then pause it, take that phone call. And then at the end of the week, you know, you know, send out your invoices and get your thousand dollars. Like that's business doesn't have to be some complicated, complicated, arbitrary thing. You don't have to be you know, building Tesla's and major computer systems yet, but, you know, but, you know, you can start off doing these very fun, very, (laughs) very good things because, and this is maybe a surprise thought, maybe the first lesson, if you're trying to start your first or second business is you're not, you're not aiming for the moon. You're trying to figure out how to do this thing in the first place. So might as well have fun doing it. Absolutely. Well, and as you, as you get going, as you get started, you know, it, it really, I'm telling you, the hard work creates momentum. And then the momentum creates the desire to work harder. It's funny how they're so correlated. You know, I'm sure you've heard the quote a million times, like, the harder I work, the luckier I get. You know, I actually don't like the word luck when people say like, well, you got lucky to find a niche. No, I didn't. I created it. 
Okay. I had, there was no luck involved, you know, and it's like, well, it looks so easy. It's like you, you see it today. You, you didn't, you didn't know me when I was pulling up to a hotel and sleeping in the back because I wanted oh, no. people to think that I was staying at a hotel, which I was just not inside the hotel. Right. You weren't there those days, right? You, when it was so easy today, everything is so logical because you're seeing the result. You see the result of all my hard work and all of the thought processes that went into everything, all of the fine little details, because I kept working on problems. So as you see the results, of course it looks easy, right? And of, of course you have a great market, you know, when you're in youth sports. Well, so, <laughs> you know, it's another good market, food, right? People will always eat. They're like, well, people will always play sports. Well, people always drive. People will always fly. People will always mow their grass. Like every every industry has things people will always do. And you know, I don't know. Those are things. But you know, that's just a side note. But you know, as we as we you know move forward, we're gonna we're gonna lead into next week, right? And so uh, we're gonna end today with a quote uh, that we will start you know next week with, and it's gonna be by John D. Rockefeller, who said, "Don't be afraid to give up the good to go for the great." This has been another episode of the Poster Boy Podcast, brought to you by utproducts.com. Find and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. Visit us at theposterboybook.com to grab your copy of the book.